What's up everybody, Greg here from Lens Portigo and Lens Rentals, and in today's video, we're gonna be taking a look at a brand new monitor from Atomos, the Ninja 5. Now this has a ton of revamped features, a completely redesigned interface, and a lot of really cool things that make this one of the best monitors on the market right now, along with being a recorder. So in this video, we're gonna cover all of the exterior ports and features, as well as a little dive into the menus and the redesign, and then I'm gonna talk about some of the things you need to know before you start using one. Starting off with the exterior, the monitor is in a full aluminum housing, which is super durable. It doesn't have the plastic like you saw on some of the previous models, and is definitely one of the best feeling makes that they've done so far. I would have no problems with this falling and getting damaged because of how solid this exterior frame is. Going on to the side of the unit, you have a power button which obviously turns it on and off, as well as locks the screen, so if you don't want to adjust settings on accident, you can just push that once, it'll lock the screen, and then you won't be able to get into it again until you unlock it. Right below that, you have a mic and line level input for sending audio into the camera, as well as a headphone port for monitoring what those audio levels are. You have a remote switch to trigger this remotely, which you can also do through the camera through the HDMI if you want to use the camera as the start and stop trigger. On the bottom of the unit, you have one mounting point, which is a 3 8 hole, but it does come with a quarter 20 thread mount adapter, as well as two registration pins on either side for using RE mounts or any of those other third party ones that are a little more secure. Over on the other side, you have your HDMI inputs and outputs, and this is gonna be for your signal coming in, as well as looping through out to another monitor. Currently, there's only HDMI on this monitor, but there is something later on that I'm gonna show you that might add SDI in the future. Going to the top, you have another one of those 3 8 threaded holes with those registration pins for those extra mounts. And then over onto the back, you have one slot for an SSD. Right now, you can see I'm using a full-size SSD, but these are really designed for the new Atom X SSD minis, which are designed by Atomus and Angelbird to make a more compact SSD that will fit into this body without sticking out like you can see here. And right next to the SSD slot is where you put your Sony NP series batteries. Right now I have a 970 on there, and with this battery, it should last about an hour and a half of recording. Now the interesting thing, which I mentioned a minute ago, is that there's actually an extra port in there. If you take the battery off and look at the bottom, there is an extension port here, which is gonna be used to add on additional features later without needing to buy a whole new unit. One of those things could be SDI. Right now they have two that are announced. One is for time code syncing, so syncing a bunch of monitors together, as well as one that has an NDI port for doing video transfers over network cables, but it can be used for so many more things as well. You also have the option to run this monitor off of AC power using a dummy battery that has an AC port on it. As you can see, there's no AC port on the monitor itself. Now switching around to the front side, you have this amazing five inch touchscreen with a resolution of 1920 by 1200. It has 427 pixels per inch, which is super great for all those punch-ins when you need to times two to check your focus. You're gonna get those really sharp images instead of it sort of blurring out and all looking a little bit soft. It is a 10-bit display, so you get to see millions of colors in full HDR, as well as a brightness of 1,000 nits, which is super bright, especially for daylight viewing, so you're gonna be able to see this outside. Now jumping inside the unit and talking about some of the tech specs and codecs and resolutions and things like that, you can shoot DCI 4K up to 60 frames a second. It has ProRes and DNX HD, as well as the new ProRes RAW. We're just waiting for some cameras to be able to output that over HDMI. You can record in a 10-bit 422 option, which is gonna give you millions of colors for your post-production workflow, so you can really push it around and grade your footage to look the way you want it to, as well as being able to bring in a bunch of your own LUTs to monitor the footage from, and having a bunch of built-in ones to go from different types of LUTs like C-Log or V-Log or S-Log. One of the things that I like the most about this monitor is the complete redesign of the menus and the new layout and sort of format to access all of the tools that you have, like your anamorphic D-Squeeze, your false color, your peaking, your zebras, your punch-in, your 2X punch-in, which is really great with this 427 PPI screen. And another really great thing about having a monitor like this, which I know Atomus has done on their other ones, but having pre-roll, especially if you're recording events, you can always have it be running. And then if you catch that last couple of seconds, you're not gonna miss out on a moment just because you weren't rolling right away. Now taking a look at some of the quirks, one of the things you'll wanna be aware of is if you don't have mini SSDs, which is totally fine, that's what I'm running right now is a full-size SSD, is it will stick out on the side. So just be careful of that, you might bump it, and it does kind of make it a little bit bigger and awkward to handle. And like I just did, you might actually just bump the SSD out so it's not gonna read it properly. Because it's also fully made of aluminum, it does get fairly hot, and to compensate for that, they added in a fan, which does have a decent amount of fan noise. I know this is something they're working on, so they were gonna update in a future firmware, but as of now, the fan is still pretty loud. And because of the aluminum, it does get fairly warm. I mean, it's not gonna burn you to the touch, but if you're out in a hot environment, it might start to overheat and have some issues there. 
As far as the mounting options, having the 3 8 into a quarter 20 is a really good idea in theory, but having to use this adapter with the chance of it coming out and then losing it and then not being able to mount your monitor at all, it would have been nice to just have two separate holes, one for 3 8 and one for quarter 20, even though it's a little bit offset. Two more things that I've noticed while using it that are a little bit annoying, but not a deal breaker, is when you go into your battery, you only see a voltage. You can't change that to see a percentage left or time remaining on it. So you don't really know when it's actually gonna turn off besides using the uh, display to know when that battery is going a little bit too low. And when you're in the edit mode, it has a bunch of options for flagging your clips, like favoriting it, rejecting it, making it talent one, saying that it's overexposed or it needs audio issues or audio things fixed. But the problem is you can only do one of these at a time. So each one that you select, you have to export the XML for that, and then you have to go back in and do it for another one. So if I wanted this to be, oh, this is the first person clip, I can go in and export XML, it'll do that. But then I have to go in and say, oh, this is also overexposed, export XML. Now it doesn't take a ton of time, but it would be great if you could just mark it with all of the things that you want. So like this is an overexposed shot of talent two in a wide shot, export it. Then you just have to do it one time. It's really fast and easy to go through instead of kind of doing that repetitive motion. But that being said, there isn't much that I could find that I didn't like about this monitor. It's the right size for fitting on smaller cameras like mirrorless and DSLRs. Even throwing it on bigger cameras, it's small enough that it doesn't add a ton of weight and get in the way of other things that you're trying to do. And then besides just getting better codecs if you are shooting on some of the lower end cameras, there's some other reason that you might wanna get one of these. One of them being that you don't have a record time limit. So if you're doing interviews over a half an hour, on a normal camera you'd have to start and stop recording again. This you can just keep rolling all the way through. You don't have to worry about those restrictions of the time anymore. And like I said earlier, you get access to all of those tools that professional filmmakers use for focus and exposure. One new announcement that Adam has made this week at CES is that they've started working with Nikon to support their Z7 doing ProRes RAW out of their HDMI. There's no release date on it yet, but it should be coming soon. And I'm super excited to start getting that and testing it out on this monitor. And that's gonna wrap it up for the video on the Ninja 5. If you have any questions about this, make sure to leave those in the comments. If you wanna try this monitor out for yourself, which I highly recommend you do, I would check out the link in the description below. And if you wanna see more videos just like this one covering gear, make sure to hit that like button, subscribe for new videos every single week, and I'll see you in the next one.